Let's pray. <clears throat> Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful opportunity and time, O Lord, Heavenly Father, where we could gather with one mind as one body, O Lord. Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne of grace, knock on our doors, O Lord, Heavenly Father, as we seek your kingdom through your holy word, O Lord, Heavenly Father. Thank you for exhorting us through the songs that you are rock of our salvation, O Lord, Heavenly Father. Thank you also for encouraging us and equipping us with through the Torchlighter series, O Lord, through the testimony and the work of Vibhya Perpetual, Lord, Heavenly Father. It's amazing to see how they could or she could stand firm and stand in the gap for the love of Christ to Lord Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, her testimony was for me to live as Christ and to die is gain. And through her testimony in life, she obtained a better resurrection, Lord. Heavenly Father, We would like to seek your blessings, O Lord, Heavenly Father, that may we be also faithful to our calling, O Lord, Heavenly Father. Help us, O Lord, that we may be true to our calling, be faithful, and bring honor and glory in whatever we do, O Lord, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, as we turn scriptures and start a new series on marriage, O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, may your grace be sufficient for each one of us. Anoint me and others, O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, as we read, share, and hear from each other, O oh Lord, Heavenly Father. Help us that we may understand what you have instituted in the form of marriage, O marriage, oh Lord, through your holy word. Lead us and guide us in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So uh, we, we start a new series, marriage. And uh, so I would say like, you know, we have uh, kind of three groups here, right? One who are married for maybe decades, one who are in the middle, like, you know, married, but like, you know, with younger uh, uh, kids or young kids. And the third is someone like, you know, who's about to uh, planning to get married, right? Uh, so today uh, we will focus on God's plan and purpose in marriage, right? So we will, we will try to meditate on five verses and those five verses will teach us five things. So that's the plan and purpose. So before we start, let me ask some of you, Right, you know, I may pick a few of you, or you may be, uh, you you may tell, like you know, three groups here, right? So one from each group, I would say. Uh, what did marriage mean to you? Like you know, I mean, when you were before getting married, how did what what are some of the things that? And be be pretty honest, right? I mean, like you know. Uh, what, what were some of the thought process, right, of getting ready for marriage? What marriage meant to you? Did you put any thought process there or it was just things happen, right? So brothers and sisters both, right? Like, you know, I would like to hear what was, what were some of the thoughts uh, going through your mind? Like, you know, maybe take 30 seconds, one minute, uh -oh. Anyone? Philip, you would like to share? 
what was happening with you, like, you know, when you and I probably were in the same category. Uh, it was uh, too long ago, sure, that I forgot. <laughs> you forgot, great. No, just kidding. No. No, no I think before marriage, uh, obviously, there were uh, expectations, I think. We were single uh, for a long time. So uh, entering the marriage, uh, the key thing that I was looking for is perhaps uh, some permanence and companionship, I think. That was important. So marriage was seen as a partnership and a continuing uh, friendship, like a long-term friendship with one person. So because before marriage, uh, I had many friends, like, like many of you who are single here, hanging out with many different people and after marriage, I saw there is a definite shift that you're focused on one person. And it's a different kind of companionship or a different type of friendship. And I always saw that as a, uh, some ideals you have even before you enter the marriage and things change. So that's, uh, that's part of God's uh, teaching, I guess, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Philip. Anybody else? And I think um, you know, um, even my thinking was probably on the same lines that uh, Philip had. It was more about uh, you're lonely, um, you know, before before marriage. So probably that uh, that plays into the picture where you know you want the companion, you know. Uh, someone you know who can be uh, you know who will um, who will who will be with you you know whom you can talk to and you know share things. Obviously, you have friends, but um, that's up to up till a certain point. After that, uh, you would uh, you know you look uh, you know to you know, to, uh, to your companion. I think probably that was um, uh, that was one of the reasons uh, and. Obviously, age plays a factor, right? <laughs> and peer pressure also. So, age peer pressure, yep. yeah. And also parent pressure also. <laughs> <laughs> so now slowly things are coming up. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> peer pressure, parent pressure. Okay, I would like to hear from sisters yeah. also. Yeah, I think as brother was Sister, sister Ruth, yeah. Sister uh, Jesse. I mean, yeah. Uh, what yeah. were you saying, Philip? No, no, just to add to brother's point, like uh, I had many friends like before I got married and many a times I would go hang out with them, have a really good time, like socially. Uh, but when I came back, as uh, brother Sam was saying, I feel uh, like terribly lonely and feel that something is really missing in my life. Even though I have so many friends, I can just call them up and like have a really good time outside. But when you come back home, there is a, there is a sense that something is missing in your life that you need to make a shift at some point. And based on uh, the upbringing that we had, uh, we didn't have the liberty to do certain things that others did, right? So uh, there were some boundaries that were placed on our life, even though our parents were not with us or nobody was there to monitor us. So I think, uh, so I think that there comes a point where you feel that you do need to make that shift and get married, yes. No matter how good a time you're having as a single, uh, there comes a time when God, God also starts putting pressure on you, I think. Yeah, so I wanted to add that to Brother Sam's point. Yeah. No, the, it's good, okay. From sister's point of view, or anyone, right? You know, but sister's view also we want to hear. For me, mine is a different category because I wasn't waiting for so long after my education. So there's no, um, I would say no um, time to uh, that I felt alone. But um, I know after education, it is obvious that I can't stay or live with my parents. Obviously, they'll have to send me out of the house. <laughs> Um, but my struggle before marriage was uh, I was a born-again believer 
um, but none of my um, my siblings or my families uh, we never had um, a Christian marriage before in my family so I feared God and but I don't know how um, somebody would look for a Christian alliance for me or how things would work out so that was my I was very scared <laughs> um, yeah. and my family members they definitely um, you know bring so many proposals um, Hindu marriages so that was my point where Lord how this is gonna happen but I really have that fear but I don't have so much courage to tell I'm gonna um, go for Christian marriage but God knows my little faith. So even before I went into so much struggle, God um, allowed me to get married sooner. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. I think yours is totally different scenario. Peculiar scenario, I would say. Right? Challenges are different. Uh, and that pretty much clouded, like, you know, how do I, will, how will this happen, right? Like, you know, that was the thing. Okay. Uh, any other sisters? Or anybody who has a different thought process, anything, something. Uh, and Brother Rohit and Sister Ramni are mandatory people to speak. Right, so I will, I'm coming there, uh, but Brother Maruti, Brother Joshua, anybody like you know who, what was going in your mind other than like you know now we heard loneliness, companionship, like you know uh, looking for more proximate uh, proximity with like you know having a friendship, like you know uh, all that. Any anything else? Any other pointers? Same mindset. What was going through? I'm sorry. I was expecting a same mindset, uh, like uh, the same goals. Okay. Like whatever I go, I have the goals. So, so I I wanted to have the same goals also in, in the other person. And uh, yeah, similarly, I had the same experience uh, looking for a long time. And uh, so, uh, so uh, um, looking for a right partner. And uh, so I got matches from different uh, background, different background. Mm -hmm. So it was tough for me and uh, it was hard for me also. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, mine is different case. I was not born again. So, hmm. yeah, but yeah, so at what I had it. So let, let's hear from that angle also, right? Like, you know, yours, yours is mostly worldly angle, maybe, right? You know, you were not born again. What was some of your thought process? Why? Yeah, I think desire was I basically, yeah, we can. Uh, live together and one important thing is I as I knew uh, Ruth already so basically I was looking for peaceful and bright uh, life so that, that that's what I was having in my mind so, so okay. Not, not... okay anybody else All right, Sister Ramni and Brother Rohit, what are you guys thinking? Brother, Since the uh, thought process has just entered. Like you know, any anything? Yeah. So for me, uh, I think the main point is companionship, just like any other uh, uh, individual. Like I need a companion where I can share my my feelings openly or i can have a good fellowship have a long journey together yeah. and uh, yeah of course uh, in god's will if we just go together uh, as a journey it, there's a different uh, feeling uh, you know we, we can share a lot of stuff with our parents and with our friends but the intimacy that we share with the life partner is completely different so 
to fulfill that we need marriage we need a marriage we need a partner to share everything or have a friendship which is long term and where you both are uh, both you belong to each other um, you know care for each other and all those things just a normal a desire with nothing special okay sister ramani yeah. um it's the same thing brother i was looking for a companionship and uh, um a trustworthy guy and uh, especially um my parents um i had a lot of pressure from my parents in the beginning days but they gave up on me at certain time because they were get bringing all these matches and uh, none of them are seems to be um correct alliance for me so uh, they've been looking looking and um so um so we we uh, initially they asked me what do what kind of guy you want cuz um i don't know um what kind of guy i want after the completion of my bachelor's um i i also don't know after the completion of my masters what kind of guy i want but uh, god taught me what kind of person i want by bringing uh, so many different matches from different backgrounds so from from every um match my parents look at we learn something so we learn something like what kind of things we don't want in a person so that's how i came to know what kind of a man i want and i am thankful to god that he showed me what kind of a guy he, um i want in his will so um, yeah so that's how i i came to know um, that's how i learned what kind of a person i want with all the understanding and uh, um good thoughts and supportive nature and co- good companionship okay anybody else sister divya sister jessy jaypal Jaypal brother is being careful, Anna. Being careful, Anna. <laughs> no, I think everybody is going in the same. One person opened up companionship, and everybody is sticking to the same theme or line, right? So, I'm, I'm, it's not that I'm not expect. I'm expecting a different answer or something. No, right? Uh, so I, I want to, I, I want to hear like you know if somebody else had different thought process. um yeah na so i was also looking for a born again believer and baptized also um who not only preaches bible or who reads bible but who follows it who follows a christ and who should be um a little kind of disciple um then i think i thought that would be good for my okay. um thinking because i want someone who is little spiritual also mm. um not too much worldly um mm. yeah Okay. Yeah, I remember that. Like, uh, yeah, go ahead, Philip. Yeah, I remember that things have to happen in God's time. Like for me, the uh, parents putting started putting a lot of pressure, but it almost took more than five or six years uh, before it really uh, came to pass. So, so we should not put artificial pressures on God's timing. So I know that when I started the process, uh, I remember writing like four pages. <laughs> what exactly i'm looking for and wow. it was very like did you a, frame it or uh, <laughs> is it still there no is it with rashi no, or is it with you only no i never used it for rashi <laughs> 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 but i remember i used it uh, based on the words actually you're speaking on so that was my initial thought that there should be unity at in different levels i think unity of mind unity of character and yeah. unity of families and unity of vision and so on and so god taught me that uh, you cannot go with the preconceived uh, expectations into the search process and also often times i would simply uh, i knew that i was still young at that time and i would say keep saying that uh, my time has not come i'll keep waiting for the next one right what if i <laughs> miss a better person you know if i choose this person maybe there's a better one waiting at the next door so so that way the time kept 
ticking and I was also having a good time because as a single, I was having good friends. So I didn't miss it in that part, but a point came where God made me so lonely, despite having so many friends that, uh, so, so the point I'm trying to make is that uh, we cannot go with preconceived notions and we cannot rush God's will, so. No, that's a good point. Yeah. All right, brother Thiru and uh, Vishwas, yet to like you know, I know, uh, get into that boat, but uh, I'm pretty sure Thiru, I know, Vishwas, I don't know, but Thiru, uh, at some point of time, will also get ready, right? Any thoughts? In any or thought when when it will uh, when the time will come, like you know, you'll start thinking. No, it's not about that. I mean, there's always that at the back of your mind. It's not like uh, you will always stay single. Like mm -hmm. I could relate more to what Brother Philip said. You have a lot of friends. You can hang out with them. But again, because of the way we were brought up, there's always a limit up to what we can do or the sort of friends we can have or the things we can do. And you always come back home and you're back to the same thing. And life is not just about that. It has to go beyond that as well. Yeah. So... Like it has to happen and it will happen during God's time. But then again, when you're looking for a partner, first thing is whether they're in God or not. Uh, how is their faith? That's the first thing you all, you, like for me at least, you should always look for when uh, you're thinking about a life partner. And the rest just follow about that. And the second biggest thing is compatibility because everyone has different tastes. Uh, people have been brought up in different ways, uh, different mindsets, different mentalities. That also has to match. I think these are the two main things. The rest, uh, you have to compromise here or there, but these are the two main things that I think are important. Okay. Yeah. I think Perfect. there is also a natural attraction which God has put inside our hearts. Mm -hmm. Like at, at a certain time or certain age, we, are, we tend to get attracted and we want yeah. to have a partner very strongly. Mm -hmm that uh, yeah we seek for a girlfriend or something like that that's natural process inside a human being i don't know god has put that so okay all right anybody else before we start i think like you know we 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 have a good we spend probably 10 minutes understanding like you know what it is uh so Brother Sharad, you didn't share your experience. <laughs> my my experience, I would say, like was mostly worldly, right? Like you know, a lot of things were there. Like you know, first of all, age is a factor. Peer pressure was there. Parental, it was more of parental. I don't know, like you know, my engineering happened because my father used to say, like you know, oh, he'll be mechanical engineer. <laughs> I became a mechanical engineer, right? Or well, this is the time, like you know, they started looking. I was in Chennai. I uh, and then it, it happened. And most of the things like uh, were, uh, okay, it was looked almost five, six, seven matches and then things happened, right? Uh, it was not that like, you know, I was on my knees looking for, like, you know, praying. I did not do that. So mine was, uh, I would say a bad chapter, right? I did not do anything. Things just happened. And things just because parents wanted, like, you know, I got married. Uh, most of the during marriage time, I think, like, you know, it was more like, you know, where do I stitch my suit? What would be the venue, the reception? It was all that kind of stuff. So nothing, I would say, not even the in the circle of God or looking into the word of God, like, you know, what should I? Okay, I, we have. So most of the... Uh, ideal things would be like, you know, okay, you know what, we we keep our parents in image or like, you know, certain couples in image saying like, you know, or maybe some film personalities like, you know, you know what, this is what I, 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 ideal marriage we don't know, right? Like, you know, we saw our parents, maybe the closest, maybe some families like, you know, if some of my friends got married and we see like, you know, okay, that also says like, you know, you know what, a couple of my friends get married. I also should like, you know, so I think most of mine were nothing, though I was in Christ, though I was uh, a Christian, uh, though I married a Christian, everything was there, but I 
did not even seek i did not even uh i, I was nowhere close so i could not can you guys hear me go ahead no no there was yeah. some disturbance with through that yeah no some yeah. disturbance was there yep. so mine was a bad chapter anyway like you know that's why probably god is teaching me uh, in ways he has taught jacob and all that right so anyway uh, but i i think what is important is uh, god's plan understanding god's plan right is very important and it's we know like you know word of god is the most powerful thing right it can teach and he has put us given us everything in bible right there is no circumstance no scenario that you cannot learn from bible right that we we all know so understanding from that is very important and i'm glad like you know we have started this series and all that so we'll try to understand so can we go to the next slide according to google vijay you wanted to say something yes sir no. <laughs> sure please go ahead share. absolutely yeah before my marriage like uh, almost uh, after my 10th grade almost like uh, uh, 10 years i was away from my family uh, <clears throat> i was there in different places so Uh, i habituated like loneliness like uh, i was alone more, most many years and i was stayed with a couple of my friends in different rooms and all so one way like i enjoyed uh, uh, like a uh, lone friendship like friendly environment and uh, alone also like uh, i enjoyed that way but uh, the, during that time i learned many lessons like even cooking wise there are many things uh not much depended on anybody uh i alone myself able to do many things uh and same time i felt like loneliness and one more thing is i saw like many families like uh, how they are facing different kind of problems <laughs> after their marriage so a little bit i worried about that so because of that one time like uh, my parents said also a lot of pressure came Uh, that time i decided only one thing if mm-hmm. it is completely god's will uh, until uh, finding complete god's will i thought not to go for uh, of proceed so during that uh, uh, situ- like uh, when they searching that friend proposals i went through many problems but now maybe i cannot share <laughs> like uh, uh, it takes lot of time but uh, the thing is like almost like 4 to 5 years i waited uh, after like once my marriage over then when i think back now all these years really god blessed me lot and uh, he settled me i'm more uh, enjoying uh, uh, before <laughs> more than uh, before marriage yeah akka got the valentines gift already god <laughs> <laughs> we are we are totally in two separate categories like he waited for many years i was like ready you know i ready. didn't wait at all but my one thing i um i wanted to say is um i i said i didn't have courage to stand for um christian marriage but then um that year when i was praying um for um a promise from god so hosea 219 was my promise that year so i have betrothed thee forever so be- mm. even not just for marriage betrothal is for marriage but also the promise that god um, gave me is you will be with me forever so that gave me courage even to share with my family or i know that i can um, you know god will be with me and he will lead me that's when i got that courage by god's promise yeah the brother was waiting all this time for you sister so <laughs> no, i think uh, prayer is the key i mean you have to seek we we heard uh, little john and us singing also right 
So we have to seek, we have to pray. And I've seen successful testimonies, Brother Parmesh's testimony, I know, like, you know, Sister Harita, who was here, like, you know, her testimony, I know how their marriages were, happened and all that. Like, you no, know, they saw only one, one, uh, one alliance. And through prayer, like, you know, it, it was done, right? And that was their prayer, like, you know, both unknown to each other, things so prayer is the key. Uh, unfortunately, I did not do that, but I would recommend the people or the younger generation who are doing like, you know, uh, of course, it's important. We think like, you know, at sometimes like, uh, you know, God will give, he will fulfill our desire and like, you know, but I think it's, it's good to seek the Lord, to seek his face because this is your lifetime journey, right? Of course, he has great plans for you. Right, uh, but I've seen uh, greater testimonies when uh, uh, before marriage itself. Right, you know, people were seeking. Of course, others are praying, but you have to do it. It's your life. So, with that, okay, I'll, I'll, let's. I'll take one minute. <laughs> sure, go ahead. So, yeah, as Anna mentioned about prayer, um, from Hyderabad, I went to my hometown, and uh, obviously. Um, I had to wait a few years for marriage and uh, my mom, my dad and my, myself, we three were at the home, we were praying. Uh, obviously, marriage was on top of our list. We prayed uh, for a few hours. Then um, I got a call um, from uh, my auntie and then, uh, I mean, uh, this marriage alliance came up uh, when we just uh, ended the prayer. And that was the only alliance that I... Uh, I directly went to their home and uh, we did prayer and uh, that's how our marriage was finalized. Yeah. Within maybe less than 10-15 days, yeah, our marriage was finalized, maybe in 3-4 weeks, I think. Yeah. But I had to pray a lot. Yeah. That's it enough for me. Yeah. Good. All right. Um, we'll try to spend some time in the world. So based on uh, Google, like, you know, there are certain categories. Why do people get married, right? They say most of the people marry for love. I think this is, they did not consider Indian and all that, right? Like, you know, they might have considered just, or maybe they might have considered this also, right? So some people marry for financial benefits, which is true. Uh, health insurance was strange for me. Marry for religious reason, 33%. Uh, marry for legal reasons, I can agree, like, you know, looking at this Western culture and all, right? 23%. Marry to have children, 41%. Because of society expectations, yes. I mean, at least we definitely know that's so true for at least Indian culture, right? So that's why people, I, I'm not saying these are the only reasons. This, this is something like, you know, I thought so. But let's now read a few verses from the Bible, right? Uh, English, maybe uh, who can read Telugu? I mean, I know like everybody can read Telugu. I can read, brother. Uh, one person I want, right? You know, okay. Brother Maruti, uh, who can read Tamil? I'll brother read. Tiru? Yeah, I'll read, brother. Okay. Uh, we don't need Hindi, like, you know, I, I captured Hindi also, but English, Telugu and Tamil. The reason being these five verses are the foundation for people who already are married more than 20 years, like me. People who are just married or like, you know, in the journey of like, you know, a couple of years, people who are getting married. And you have to clean your slate of like, you know, what world gives us a picture, what our parents gives us a picture, what an ideal couple gives us a picture. This is straight from the Bible. You have to really clean your thinking, clean your mind. Think like, you know, what is God teaching? If you want to follow, we heard last Sunday, Russell uncle said like, you know, he wants to give us material as well as spiritual blessings. Not one time, not two times, hundredfold, right? So it is very important for us to, 
if you have such a certain mindset and we do that then it is difficult right certain things i know like you know we have taken it for granted how it should be uh, but don't keep like you know let's learn from the bible five verses we have read these verses plenty of times but they want to teach us something right so let's read in english uh maybe rohit you can read in english yeah, for the maruti sure sure uh next slide please all five verses so it is genesis 1 26 27 and 28 and then chapter 2 18 and 24 just two verses so okay. we have five verses then god said let us make man in our image in our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air over the livestock over all the earth and over all the creatures that move along the ground so god created man in his own image in the image of god he created him male and female he created them god blessed them and said to them be fruitful and increase in number fill the earth and subdue it rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves moves on the ground the lord god said it's not good for the man to be alone i will make a helper suitable for him for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh thank you let's move to the next slide hindi we will skip but maybe telugu we can we can read in telugu brother maruti can lead us దేవుడు మన స్వరూపమందు మన పోలిక చొప్పున నరులను చేయుతము వారు సముద్రపు చేపలను ఆకాశ పక్షులను పశువులను సమస్త భూమిని భూమి మీద ప్రాకు ప్రతి జంతువును ఏలుదురు గాకనియు పలికెను దేవుడు తన స్వరూపమందు నరుని సృజించెను దేవుని స్వరూపమందు వారు వాణి సృజించెను స్త్రీని గాను పురుషుని గాను వాణి సృజించెను దేవుడు వారిని ఆశీర్వదించెను ఇట్లనగా మీరు ఫలించి అభివృద్ధి పొంది విస్తరించి భూమిని నిండించి దానిని లోపరుచుకునండి సముద్రపు చేపలను ఆకాశ పక్షులను భూమి మీద ప్రాకు ప్రతి జీవిని ఏలుడని దేవుడు వారితో చెప్పాను మరియు దేవుడైన యహోవా నరుడు ఒంటరిగా ఉండట మంచిది కాదు వానికి సాటి అయిన సహాయము వాని కొరకు చేయదని అనుకునను కాబట్టి పురుషుడు తన తండ్రిని తన తల్లిని విడిచి తన భార్యను హత్తుకొనును వారు ఏక శరీరమై ఇందురు పిన్బు దేవన్ నమదు సాయిలాగవూ నమదు రూపత్తినేయూ మనుషనై ఉండాకువోమాగ అవర్గల్ సముద్రత్తి మచ్చంగలయూ ఆగాయత్తు పరవగలయూ మిరుగ జీవన్గలయూ భూమి అనైతయూ భూమిమేల్ ఊరూ సగల ప్రాణిగలయూ ఆలక్కడవర్గల్ ఎన్రార్ దేవన్ తమ్ముడియ సాయిలాగ మనుషనై సృష్టిస్తార్ అవనై దేవ సాయిలాగవే సృష్టిస్తార్ ఆను పెన్నుమాగ అవర్గలై సృష్టిస్తార్ పిన్బు దేవన్ అవర్గలై నోకి నీంగల్ పలుగి పెరుగి భూమియ నిరప్పి అదై కీడ్పడుతి సముద్రత్తి మచ్చంగలయూ ఆగాయత్తు పరవగలయూ భూమిమేల్ నడమాడుగిర సగల జీవ జంతుగలయూ ఆండు కొల్లుగల్ ఎంజు సొల్లి దేవన్ అవర్గలై ఆశీర్వదిస్తార్ పిన్బు దేవనాగ్య కచ్చర్ మనుషన్ తనిమియాయి ఇరుపదు నల్లదల్ల ఏచ్చ తునియే అవనకు ఉండాకువేన్ ఎంజార్ ఇదని మిత్తం పురుషన్ తన తగపనయూ తన తాయియూ విట్టు తన మనవియోడే ఇసైందిరుపాన్ అవర్గల్ ఒరే మాంసమాయిరుపార్గల్ thank you tiru all right let's move to the next slide so now first thing right uh, so god's plan from marriage is to reflect his image so the whole study today we will focus only on these five verses and you have to imagine like you know uh, god's image god's character uh the god god head i would say like you know think from that perspective right so first thing we see that genesis 1 26 27 tells us then god said let us make man in our image in our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air right 
So fast forward. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, in, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So Bible teaches Adam and Eve and Adam and Eve as husband and wife were created in the image of God. And therefore were meant to bear God's image, to be in his likeness. So image and likeness is the key, right? So marriage was meant to model and display God's glory to all creation. Now, when we say that, uh, in what way the image of God can be reflected in the marriage union, right? These are the pointers which we are going to see, right? And we all know Genesis 2.24 says like, you know, two becoming one flesh. Now, when God made, uh, so this can be understood, I would say, like, so we know like, you know, two becoming one is like, you know, plurality. Uh, we are talking about here, but this can be understood when we see the character of God. Say, let, let us make man in our own image, right? That means the Trinity or the triunion God was present there. That means God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, right? So if you really see the plurality, the God the Father, God the Son, and the God the Holy Spirit, they are all one. But yet they are three individual personalities or persons. So when a couple gets married, they are meant to demonstrate their marriage as two individual people becoming one for the rest of their lives while maintaining their individuality. So that's the first point which we have. Again, in Trinity, what we see is union, right? In union, uh, can somebody read John, Gospel according to St. John 519, please? Then answer Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Okay, thank you. So, I mean, and then also maybe we can read uh, John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all the things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Yeah. So if you see here, right, to the Trinian God or the three different uh, roles that they have, we see that Lord Jesus was completely submissive and surrender to the Father. And here we see God the Holy Spirit or Holy Spirit is submissive to both, right? The Father as well as the Son. So it's it's so in the same way, when God again, right? God is God has created us in his own image and likeness. And this before Lord Jesus came in the heavenly realm, or like you know, God had kind of a scenario, they were completely in union. That's why one John says, like, you know, God is love. We are going to touch that point. But there is a, uh, what do you say? Uh, there is a perfect submission in the Godhead to each other. So husband and wife, when they are coming together, that submissiveness is very important. So, When God made man and woman in his image, there was meant to be in a, they, they, he created an order in the relationship. And no, no offense to like, you know, female is low or wife is less or husband is more, right? Like, you know, it's not that. 
that's the order we know who lord jesus christ is but he was thoroughly submissive while he was in flesh completely submissive he is the lord but he was completely submissive and there are many quotations we can see like you know where god the father is so proud of who he is right so that's the first thing we see right you know first we see plurality of course three in one so two husband and wife they're one flesh second thing what we see is the union in union we see how father the son and the holy spirit are submissive to each other so in that he has first of all created a way an order which we can read in first corinthians uh, chapter 11 verse 3 if somebody can read please now i want you to realize that the head of every man is christ and the mm-hmm. head of the woman is man and the head of christ is god okay so this is again right i am th- this is not just the verse he has created man and woman in his image and likeness he wants to set an order there like you know he wants to feel that's why like you know ephesians 5 when we say this is a mystery like you know not easy to understand right so paul says in the same way the head of christ is god so the head of the woman here better translated as wife right is man god made the husband and wife relationship to mirror the godhead specifically in the area of authority so that's the second part now the third part is love right i already touched upon love like you know we see that how this tri- triunion first uh, john um, episode to first john right where we see god is love right how god loves uh, lord jesus or the holy spirit or this triunion right so there also we see the submission of wife happens in perfect loving relationship with her husband similarly throughout eternity the godhead has always dwelt in a perfect relationship of love and authority father loves the son the son submits to the father the father does not provoke or oppress the son and make him submit lord jesus willingly right god so loved the world but like you know the action was fulfilled like you know what lord jesus christ did on the cross he did willingly he was not forced by the father to go through it right he willingly did it so that's it's a it's a very deep mystery that we need to understand and it's very important that we 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 understand that it is not again right pay attention here it is not that the wife does not love her husband or that the husband never submits to his wife it is just the defining characteristic of woman service to her husband should be submission that's the key factor similarly the defining characteristic of the husband service to his wife should be love so one is submission the other one is love and it should happen willingly the love should be so deep that automatically the wife honors seeing that love like you know who can give me such kind of love and that life that love is demonstrated on the cross right you know how far did christ go he went all the way till cross so the husband sir challenged like you know that our love should be that we the sacrificial love right should be there so again uh, ephesians 525 somebody can read please husbands love your wives just as christ loved the church and gave yeah. himself up for her to make her holy cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless yeah so as we touched like you know uh, how did christ love the church 
he died for her he also teaches us her the word of god the husband must love his wife sacrificially and lead his wife spiritually it's very important that man of the house or the husband should be spiritually sound if husband unfortunately i have seen like you know wives are more spiritual or more godly more firm and you know in in god's word unfortunately that's not husband's problem i think it's parents and the upbringing right that's where again we come in right as we come into marriage we have a huge responsibility as parents we'll come there so when the world looks at a christian marriage they should see a husband who makes daily sacrifices to his wife actively leads the home spiritually he leads his family to a bible preaching church at home he leads family to family he does family devotions he serves his wives and edifies her with his words with pure words holy words loving words he sacrifices to please her and build her up right now i've seen our marriages right like you know if husband says one thing wife says two things right if wife says one thing two things right now, there is no building building up that building up is not that all of you said like you know companionship now when you are going for companionship are you ready to build each other up that's important so that's where the wife looking at all these qualities right running the house doing the family devotions encouraging and building the wife like you know the wife honors him as her head and submits to him in everything looking at that sacrifice the hus- the wife should honor the wife should be submissive like you know this is the man i am like you know glued to this is a redemptive picture of the gospel so marriage should demonstrate the perfect love and submission of the godhead i mean that's what the entire picture we are saying and um, it should also reflect the perfect sacrificial love of christ for the church and the church right so we 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 understood that so this is what we see the glory and the greatness of god so that's that's what we see in marriage it should be our desire to reflect god see remember again like you know we started with he created man and woman in his image and likeness it's his image his character is which is flowing through us right so we should if we are reflecting we reflect his image right so in marriage it should be our desire to reflect god and bring glory to him since that was his original plan so that's the first point let's go to the next slide second thing is god's plan for marriage is to raise godly children and this we read in genesis 128 god bless them and said to them be fruitful and increase in number fill the earth and subdue it if somebody can read malachi 215 it has an answer also there um uh, i don't know if somebody has telugu bible they can read because king james version niv and all that the slightly different but it and it has an answer there i can read brother let me know yeah go ahead which verse uh, 15 uh, chapter 2 was 15 okay sorry english says has not the lord made them one we have seen that right in flesh and spirit they are his and why one because he was seeking godly offspring so guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith with the wife of your youth okay brother in yeah. telugu konchamuga nenu daivaatmunandina varilo 
ఎవరునూ ఇలాగున చేయలేదు ఒకడు చేసినను ఏమి జరిగినో దేవుని చేత సంతతి నొందవలనని అతడు యత్నము చేశాను కదా కాగా మిమ్మల్ని మీరే జాగ్రత్త చేసుకుని యవ్వనము నా పెండ్లి చేసుకుని నా మీ భార్యల విషయంలో విశ్వాసఘాతకులుగా ఉండకుడి అగైన్ i'm again i'm saying right you know when god created man and woman he created in his likeness he created in his image and he wants his offspring also be fruitful and all like you know to establish his kingdom one of the parents highest priorities like you know and purpose is to teach their children the bible to help them grow in character and help them to find their spiritual gifts and calling in serving the lord if i fail to tell my son or daughter that this is the spiritual gift god has given and i'm encouraging them and building them and i'm creating then we are building god's kingdom so as parents you know yes everybody's mindset is okay we come as two individuals becoming one is important but raising children is not easy but there also we need god's help there also we have to pray on daily basis because we fail at every step we give up as parents certain things really what do you say burden our hearts it's it's it grieves us because we are at some times like you know we are helpless but i'm sure god will pass so so that's most important thing right the second point god's plan is to raise children now i also want to say in some cases it is not god's will for everybody to have children right there are physical needs that keep them from having children for others god simply never called for them to marry like you know singleness i'm i'm just want to reason is no matter in what capacity we are it has been god's will from the beginning that man be fruitful and be multiplied right we will touch on this topic again like you know in the third or fourth point so having children should be considered as way of obeying god and building his kingdom therefore we should pray about it and plan for it as we do with any ministry going to the next slide third point third point is genesis 128 again god blessed them and said them fill the earth and subdue it right rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground so third point is to establish and build his kingdom of course we we saw that now after telling adam and eve to be fruitful and multiply god tell them to subdue and rule this right uh now here uh, i would like to touch like you know because in some cases so first let's read first corinthians 12 7 where it is saying it's a gift of god actually it's a spiritual gift uh to basically to build up god's body and his kingdom of course like you know children godly children again to build his kingdom here also like you know we have individual gifts right uh can somebody read first corinthians 12 7 please now to each one of the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good yeah so this this when we are talking manifestation manifestation of spirit it means the spiritual gift that he has given both of you right now when when two individuals are coming together right now if you say 
Sister Ruth may be gifted in some something, right? Brother Joshua may be gifted, but when they are building and bringing up, like you know, his kingdom, it's it's basically a, a gift that can be established, right? So a godly marriage is a powerful weapon for the kingdom of God. So yes, it started with prayer, right? Like you know, two people when they're coming, the goal is again, brother Jaypal said, right? The two prepositions from and to, right? The from preposition he saved us from sin and the wrath of God, and the other proposition is to serve God here to build His kingdom, right? It's important. So uh, they build the kingdom through raising godly seed, corporate prayer, service to God's church, and evangelism of the world. So certainly, each each couple will have a unique gift and unique way that God has called them to build His kingdom. Right, as I was saying. So one couple may excel in worship, another may be in teaching, another may be in hospitality, another in missionary or missions. each couple must discern the way similarly first corinthians 7 7 we don't have to go there paul is also saying like you know i wish i can preach everybody to be single <laughs> right but it's not god's will that everybody should be single but he is saying let's read verse first corinthians 7 7 also because he's saying even if though you are single your life should be dedicated to god to christ right so it's not that okay only if you're married you can you can take the kingdom of god further not really right so let's read first corinthians 7 7 also please i wish that all men were as i am but each man has his own gift from god one has this gift another has that yeah so here basically he's talking about like you know uh, you know single like me right you know when they have a ministry to right they have to basically uh, celibacy is not for everyone right uh, they have to uh, make sure like you know they have dedicated their life in godly work also so three points first we have seen what was the first point god is we, god is our image we are, we are made in god's image to reflect god's image right reflect because he has a plan but we have to through our life and through our worship or through our life we have to reflect his image second fruitful raise godly children raise godly children third to establish and build his kingdom correct and the fourth one the next one which we all spoke about right uh genesis chapter 2 verse 18 the lord god said it is not good for the man to be alone i will make a helper suitable for him now god has uh, his utmost desire is in mankind for his in- intimate companionship right this is why many uh, i'm pretty sure everybody touched upon this topic like you know many single people though they have family and friends covered something more and often have bouts of loneliness right god man god made man to be married to woman and woman to a man now certainly some of the some in the world have gift of singleness and all that we we we, we touched upon it uh, but let's uh, yeah let's read the uh, so i think like in you know, the last time first corinthians 7:30 to 7:7 so 7:32 is the proper verse where uh, he is uh, given like you know for single people like you know that they should uh, they, they they should uh, use their singleness for the glorification of god right that's this is the verse um, ecclesiastes 4 uh, 9 uh, to 12 tells like you know two are better than one because they have a good return for their work right we we know this so i'm not going to go there and a cord of three strands is uh, not quickly broken right so companionship it's 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 important right other desire or plan for uh, 
marriage is companionship in the last one next slide please for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and they will become one flesh now this is to make a new family unit so genesis 224 we see like you know uh, whatever we read like you know a lot of times we say okay uh, we in our arguments also people use bible verses right you're still stuck with your parents you know bible tells us like you know you uh, forget about your parents now like you know you have wife to take care or like you know people have heard uh, uh, these kind of like you know sarcastic remarks or jokes like you know jokingly like you know you you are supposed to leave and cleave to woman kind of a thing right so this means that in marriage is basically starting a new unit right this does not mean that they no, are no longer their parents children that's not true right but it does mean that the priorities of a man and a woman have changed their priority must now be their marriage right this is very important because one of the top reasons of divorce or anything like you know it is because of in laws right like you know we have but as as a child it is our duty and it's a commandment which comes with a blessing like you know honor your parents right honor thy mother and father so that you may you know enjoy the long life right the only commandment which comes with a promise okay so married couples may be very careful about this right we are always called to honor our parents and even care for them first timothy 5 4 can somebody read please it's our duty whether you are a woman or a man it doesn't matter you are it's a god's commandment we are supposed to honor our parents but we should honor our spouse first because god has this instituted marriage so that we can experience his image his likeness right his godhead so first timothy 5:4 please but if a widow has children or grandchildren these should learn first of all to put their religion into practice by caring for their own family and so repaying their parents and grandparents for this is pleasing to god okay thank you so so the fact that man is called to leave his father's house also implies uh that he must be able to support himself and his wife or new life i mean uh, uh financially also right that's why if you see like you know financially if you are not there people will not seek even alliance right so it implies independence basically young couples who are still dependent upon their financially often invite unnecessary tensions in the marriage life right so the parents financial support typically comes with certain amount of control of expectations and all that right so this is just on a side bar like you know not i'm not saying but ideally god wants you to leave that doesn't mean like you know you don't honor your parents you have to bible also teaches like you know we have to care for them take care of them right but he wants when you are leaving and you know living with your wife that means like you know you're starting a new family unit again same thing right to raise godly children to build establish his kingdom and all that right so we should it's it's basically we independence is good right because you you have to as i said as man loves his wife he has to make sure like you know getting married is one thing right having children is another thing but bringing those children into a proper relationship with god you know you have to having your family devotions on daily basis like you know sitting and identifying like you know what is their spiritual gifts right 
is important. We have to talk to our children saying like, you know, well, this is, I, I can see and establish and build them up. Like, you know, not building just husband and wife, like, you know, building the children and showing their spiritual gifts is very, very important. So those are the five things, five simple verses. But this is what the God's plan and purpose is. Like, you know, before the marriage, I thought like, you know, this would be the foundation and this is where he started, right? Uh, and in conclusion, the next slide or the last slide, we see that uh, let's try to remember God's plan for managed marriage union so that we can fulfill God's purpose, right? If you don't know what God wants from our marriage, then there is no point living uh, uh, living by it, right? Like, you know, because you, you are directionless there. You don't even know, like, you know, what. But clean your slate and mind, like, you know, thinking, like, you know, this is how a woman should be, or this is how a wife should be. This is how a hu husband should be, right? That this is what God has created us. This is what he wants. The number one, that we reflect his image. Number two, raise godly children. Number three, establish his kingdom and build his kingdom. Fourth, of course, companionship is very, very important. And the last one, he wants to make a new family unit, us to make a new family. So may God bless this word. I know like, you know, we took a little bit longer time uh, being the foundation and uh, I, I wish I had meditated this before I was getting married. After 20 years, probably like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to go uh, back and see like, you know, and everywhere I see like, you know, my page is full of holes, right? So, but uh, may God bless this word. If you have any questions, like, you know, we can ponder maybe a few minutes. I know it's late, but uh, uh uh, it's it's important to understand God's plan and purpose in marriage. Uh, and may God encourage us, equip us, challenge us, give us a new direction, right, in our marriage, thinking like, you know, how we, we should. Maybe some of us are doing most of the things. So may God bless their marriage, right? But again, as, as somebody is seeing this, they should say, you know what, this family is a moral family, like, you know, which does this, right? You know, may, let's build each other like that, right? So that our marriages are more fruitful, right? Our marriages are more uh, blessing to others. So may God bless this world.